Hello, beautiful people. Here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of September 12th through the 18th, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, how are you? I hope things are going okay. Um, it's just been really, really intense times. I don't have to tell any of you. You all are feeling it. And I'm really uh, reflecting on just the shift that we're undergoing and everyone, you know, including myself and other readers and astrologers and healers have been talking about like, there's this big shift or we're like in this preparation mode. And it wasn't until earlier this morning, I was re-listening to the astrology podcast and um, their September, for uh, September forecast. And one of the astrologers, I can't remember which one, um, but they mentioned how next year during springtime or next year in general, right, we have Saturn's going to move into Pisces, which is a really big deal um, because Saturn has been in Aquarius since essentially um, the end of, I think, December of 2019. And then Pluto is going to move into Aquarius next year, I believe. Yes. Um, and that is a major because Pluto has been in Capricorn for a really long time. Um, I will get the exact length of time here, um, soon. I probably should have had it noted, but it's been over a decade since Pluto has been in Capricorn. It's been a long time. Um, and so there is a lot of big changes and Pluto is probably like the biggest. And when we think about Pluto, it's just like this slow transformation metamorphosis like this whole like shedding of the skin of the soul and just there's so much there so I'm going to talk more about that um as we get closer to that time because I don't want to like project too much into the future but I will share soon just like what um that essentially will mean um and also with Saturn moving to Aquarius or sorry Saturn moving to from Aquarius to Pisces is going to be a really big deal so I'll talk about that too because Saturn and Pisces just isn't when you think about Saturn and Saturn is like wanting structure wanting a method wanted mastery wanted things to be done well and done thoroughly and slowly at times. So that's where a lot of the delays and setbacks can come through because it's like, no, we still have to like, like flush out this, this detail here, or fix some things, or you still haven't quite learned this particular step. So you have to repeat that and then you can move forward. Right. So Saturn is a very hard teacher and a slow teacher and moving Saturn, moving into Pisces, when you think about Pisces, Pisces is just like this, like feeling all the feels and just like flowing, going with the flow and just being like wherever it feels like it wants to be, even if it's like not in this reality, it's just like all over the place. I think about um, Pisces as like steam or vapor. It's that point, even though it can be go through all the different phases, um, being that Pisces is the shape shifter. When I think about Saturn in that kind of space, it just like Saturn, just like what the is going on right so it can be like I, it just it's an interesting feeling to tap into and I'm actually looking forward to it and I'm also a little bit just nervous because it's going to be transiting for me personally my fifth house of pleasure romance and good fortune and all of those things creative endeavors and like I said Saturn can really be um energy of delays and setbacks. So I'm just like, I don't like the way that looks, but I'm also really curious about what that will mean. Um, and so for myself personally, and I'm very curious about what it will mean for the collective as a whole. And so major, major shifts underway. It's like Pluto's following behind Saturn in this case, because Pluto being in Capricorn will move into Aquarius. And that shift into Aquarius, like on a collective level, this is Pluto is a generational planet. So it, it moves really, really slow. It's the slowest of, of the planets that we focus on. And so when it moves into a sign, it's a really big deal. So um, take note of, you know, what house is ruled by Aquarius in your chart, what house is ruled by Pisces, because they're going to be undergoing some really big dynamic change here um, in the next like 
six months and, and moving forward. And you might actually have like a little glimpse of what is coming up, at least with the Aquarius part of your life, because that's already been going through its changes. Um, being that Saturn's been transiting there, Jupiter had its Jupiter and Saturn had that great conjunction, super conjunction, or is it called a super conjunction? But it was like the great conjunction um, between uh, Jupiter and Saturn that initiated a new 20 year cycle and from a broader for, or a bigger scale, um, a 200 year cycle was initiated in Aquarius at zero degrees Aquarius, which is a major deal as well. And so there was already some um, shifting and influencing and, and transformation happening there and just really starting to um, plant some seeds in that area of life. And so, um, yeah, Pluto will be moving in, in there. And then Pisces is, you know, it's it's having a little bit of um, like Jupiter is going to retrograde back into Pisces. But um, I would say the Aquarius is going to be like you're probably feeling a lot of that um, shift happening, especially with the eclipses that have been happening between Scorpio and Taurus. They're going to naturally activate and trigger that Aquarius part of your life as well as the Leo part of your life. So. I just wanted to point that out. And one other thing that I really um, like resonated for me when I was listening to that, just that it was like within like 30 seconds, uh, I need to go back and listen to it because it may have been more. I paused it and I was just like, oh my goodness, this is, this is it. This is what is, oh my gosh, right? This is groundbreaking. Um, it was, someone mentioned, one of the astrologers mentioned that, or I think they all agreed upon like whatever is happening right now, um, whatever's coming up right now, especially when we're thinking about Mars doing its thing and its shadow period soon to go retrograde and all of these planets are retrograde next year again, like, or basically what's happening now is kind of like, it's a purge period, right? And a lot of what's going on is going to not be like, it's going to be something completely different right? Like where you'll be in, I would say like summer of next year, right? Like late spring, summer of next year is going to be completely different than where you are now in a way that what is happening right now, especially if you've been watching my work and connecting with what I speak about and you resonate with that, you're doing your spiritual work, you're doing your own healing, healing your shadow work, right? And you're stepping into your purpose and really getting to know and connect with your gifts um it's like this is again this is that preparation period this is like saturn at its best of like the shedding the deep shedding pluto just fi finishing its final you know um transit its final transit through capricorn and where you'll be next year you know, summertime is going to be, or if you're watching this and you're in the Southern hemisphere, where, where you'll be essentially like a little bit less than a year from now is going to be like, I just see it being just so grand, just major, and it's going to be different. And hopefully what you have been learning and refining and like the tools you've been like really um, honing are going to be of so much benefit and be a part of your life and your purpose come that time, you know, almost a year from now or summer or winter, you, you know what I'm saying, right? So that just like really resonated with me when I heard that. And I was just like, and that gave me a sense of relief because there is so much loss happening. There's so much, you know, confrontation, so many changes, so many transitions. And it's just, it's a lot, right? And there's just, it seems really existential. And at times, I mean, it is existential, right? Like what are we doing as a collective, as a species? Like what are we doing to our home, the home earth, Gaia? That it, it just, it is existential in a sense. And we're coming full circle on a lot of things. And so I do believe that, again, it, like I said, it gave me some sense of relief when I heard that, I was like, oh, thank goodness, this is not going to be, I'm not going to be dragging through all of this, like what feels like suffering at times into, you know, next year, like there is some sort of purpose within all of this. All right. So um, before I get into the energy for this week, 
Um, I do want to share, I um, am teaching, as you know, an ancient astrology class series on auspicious timing in astrology, how to utilize it for your ritual. This is going to be of such benefit moving forward, as I've just spoke about what you are learning, what you're refining, the skills that you're honing right now is going to really support you and be your foundation come a year from now. And so with this particular class, this is bringing us back to the roots of our connection to the, the divine, our connection to the cosmos, to that like bigger, um, yeah, that divine outside of self, like the gods in a way. And, you know, astrology, before it was actually even astrology, if we go back to ancient Mesopotamia, they were watching the stars they were, or the planets, so to speak, and the stars, right? And they were really creating temples and tools and watching their movements as a form of communing with the divine, as a form of divination. They call it astral divination, which I'm like, I love that phrase. Um, and I love just the feeling of it. And so the roots of astrology is really utilizing the stars and the movements of the planet and how everything like vibrates and orbits around one another to connect deeper with the divine source within all of these celestial bodies, right? And we are of the earth, we're made of the earth. And so we have that divine source within us as well and it's all connected and that source that light energy is i'm like seeing it as like pinging or just like these light beams and it's a connector right that we we don't see but it's this invisible link of light and by connecting with the cosmic energy connecting back with the lunar cycles connecting back with the sun cycles and just witnessing and being a part of the ever-changing movements of the sky or of the star at the sky and the stars that is one connecting us back to the divine but the divine within ourselves as well connecting us back to our inner strength and by doing this what i am offering in this class is basically the foundations of hellenistic astrology which is traditional astrology or considered ancient astrology i am teaching the foundations of this so you can begin by learning how to watch the transits and whatnot through the charts that we have on our computers and on our phones. But then hopefully you could take that outside and see, okay, when is Venus a morning star? Or what does it the vibe feel like at this time? Like one of the things I like to look into or feel into sometimes is like around my birthday, if it's not too cold, because I was born in January. But like, if you're awake, or if you're up at the time of your birth, like step outside and see what the vibe was like especially if you're someone who's born around twilight. I think that's like really amazing. Um, and you can get an idea of like just this, the energy or the vibe of the time um, when you were born or what the, the energy was like, right? And with that understanding, with this practice, you can then begin to choose auspicious times that are in alignment with your intentions or your goals that will be, activated or initiated through ritual. So that is basically the class that I'm teaching, right? It's a three-part series. The first part is a little bit on the history, just like a little bit. We'll talk about the planets, the signs, the, the difference between a day and night chart, which is really, really important. And then the second part, we will talk about, um, should have it here, um, transits, We'll talk about the significance of the ascendant and the midheaven and why that's really a, a really important place to focus on when you are choosing an important time. We'll talk about um, aspects as well as the timing technique annual perfection that gives you like a deeper layer to um, creating or picking a specific time that is unique to you specifically, or say if you're doing this for a client. And then the part three is basically synthesizing part one and two and um, integrating that with, with your ritual. Um, and again, this particular practice works well for um, any 
like anything you're initiating, whether it's I've used it to launch particular offerings with my business. I've used it to legitimize my business when I got um, when I applied for to be an LLC. I use um, which is called electional astrology is is the technique you'll be learning. And I've used it for collab projects with other um, healers and astrologers and things of that nature. So it is a very, very beneficial practice. Um, and I'll share with you um, my recent ritual that I did, my experience with with picking the chart and just like how divine it was. Um, yeah, so that is the ancient astrology class. The class begins, the first part is September 17th. It is 12, begins at 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. It's two hours. Um, and you can sign up for that, enroll, register on the link in the description of this video. And there will be a recording available. There will be class notes available, like my slides um, after the class. And then you'll also see that the next two classes, part two and part three, are the following Saturdays after this. So the next three, three it's a three-week, basically, commitment um, on Saturday for two hours. So it's going to be so amazing. I would encourage you to join if you feel, um, if you resonate with what I speak of here in the cosmic climate and you just feel pulled to this work. Also, one more thing is that um, I am really considering beginning my Patreon again. So if you feel that you are be, you would be interested, just let me know in the comments below. Or if you follow me on Instagram, you can send me a private message too, if you like, um, just sharing with me what it is that you would like to learn. I'm thinking mostly what I definitely know I'll do is um, I want to meet at least two times a month to have Q&As or like live Q&As and answer questions or just be like a study group. Maybe we can focus on a particular topic for for that meeting and you can come with questions or I can like, you know, teach something and then you ask questions. So basically, um, I'm pretty open, but I know I want to engage live as like a Q&A. That's something I definitely want to do. And I'll have a very special offering Um to meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, which I'll give more detail about that when I get it all, the details all organized. Uh, but let me know if you um, have any topics or anything you'd be interested in if you want to be a member of my Patreon community and support me in that way. All right, so personal update with me and where I am because I've been sharing my journey since I've had that crazy event happen um, right before that full moon in Aquarius. And I'm still in New York. And um, good old Mars retrograde, um, or Mars isn't even retrograded yet, but um, Mars shadow, Mercury retrograde. Um, I'm just kind of at a standstill with things in my life. I am moving very slowly, very carefully, and I'm in a state of discernment, and everything is really good right now. I feel that my environment is beginning to shift around me um, to serve me. And I am just being very careful and intentional about the decisions that I'm making. And it's driving me nuts because I've been feeling like so polar within my decisions. And I'm just like, oh. and I literally have to sit in the moment day by day. And I've been keeping a tarot journal. So every day I wake up and do a morning reading. I'll pull at least three cards, sometimes more. And I'll reflect on it at the end of the day and just see how everything turns out. I ref I'll reflect with myself, see if there's any patterns in regard to one decision or the other. Um, I did an old fashioned pros and cons list the other day. I've just been really going crazy in my mind. And so I just am like, where do I feel safe? Where do I feel happy? And right now I feel safe and at peace in New York where I'm at right now. There's been agreements have been made. And, you know, if something shifts, I know that I'm free to make a decision that will be in support of myself. So that's where I am. And I would encourage you to have patience with yourself. This is a time where there's like a, a lot of delays, setbacks, you know, these planets are moving really slow, changing direction um, at times. And so it's going to be, um, yeah, it's just be in the moment, find your state of peace and have some sort of discernment process, right? We are in Virgo season. All right, so cosmic climate. I want to reflect on the cosmic climate really quickly from last week. And I remember the oracle was the amulet and the talisman as well as, I don't remember the other one. 
But the amulet and the talisman, I feel that energy carries over into this week and it really carries over into this fall season here in the um, Northern Hemisphere because there is going to be a lot of shedding. There's going to be a lot of release like on in the whole, on the whole entire, within our whole entire earth experience. There is a thinning of the veil, right? As we come to these cross quarter days, um, even if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, it's like we're moving closer to Samhain and so that there's that thinning process, right? And so um, in, in this particular part in the Northern hemisphere during this, this autumn, the shift to autumn and coming closer to that, that part of the threshold, this is more of our connection to death, ancestors, those earth spirits in a way that's, you know, like the underworld kind of energy. And if you're in the Southern hemisphere, because I do have some Southern hemisphere viewers, I really appreciate you all for connecting and following me and supporting me. Um, you are on the other end where you're coming into spring. And so that thinning of the veil is connecting more to the phase, the nature spirits, like the fairies, the elves, like the, the forest, the trees, like those little, just the feel good spirits and the life within that, right? Everything coming back to life. And so um, on either way, especially in the Northern hemisphere though, I feel like the talismans and the amulets are really, really powerful at this time. So if there is one that you can craft for yourself, one that you can create um, and really just activate, even if it's say, I just got an ankh um, that I didn't really feel, I didn't, I just felt drawn to it. And actually my daughter pulled it out of the case. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I guess we're getting this. Cause I was already looking at it. And so she just like pulled it out and I was like, all right, we're getting it. And um, I've been, I set it on my altar of the men letting it charge for a bit and um, I've been sleeping with it and it's really powerful. And I'm just like, I feel like this is like my emulet right now. I feel like this is, this is, some, there's something here. Right. And so I'm, I'm going to activate that in some way here soon when it all comes through. Um, but yeah, if, if you have something in your space or some kind of, um, tool or crap or talisman, whatever it is, like, this is the time we want to really activate that, that, um, that level of protection. And also on the flip side, if there's some also another amulet or talisman that you can have as well for healing, maybe they do both. That's something we want to kind of like carry with us at this point in time, right? Um, so there's that. And I think that's, yeah. And, you know, the main energy last week, I know there, there was a lot going on last week, but it was, there was a focus on vulnerability um, and, yeah, the purging and the shifting and all of that. So there's a lot. All right. So here we are this week, September 12th through the 18th. And we're beginning this week um, or really on Tuesday, the 13th, uh, the moon will enter its disseminate. Oh my gosh. She's so sweet. She wants to kiss me. I love her. Um, so we're entering this week with a disseminating moon or on Tuesday, um, in Taurus. So that disseminating is essentially, it's like the fruit falling from the tree. The fruit begins to drop. It's harvest season. It's essentially this particular time of the year here in the Northern hemisphere, moving into autumn, but not quite autumn yet. So we're gathering that fruit and that fruit to me feels like wisdom. It feels like getting, this is September is a time also where, um, we apple picking is at, this is the peak of apple picking or the prime time, right? And that apple to me feels like forbidden knowledge that hit knowledge or wisdom. And so, you know, this disseminating moon and in Taurus, the moon is exalted in Taurus, meaning that, that is at its highest vibration or expresses its energy at its highest vibration. And so, um, yeah, I feel like this is definitely a potent time for um, really sitting with what is being revealed to you or what is being dro dropped down, allowing the divine to drop that fruit or like, yeah, allowing yourself to sit within a stillness, a place of stillness um, to receive that fruit, to receive that wisdom. And with the disseminating moon, this is a time, right? Where we're coming out of that full phase and we're refining our plans and our intentions, especially um, the intentions that were set specifically during the new moon in Virgo, but definitely, of course, overall within your life with whatever's coming up at this time. Um, 
I'm going to come back here. My little one just woke up from a nap. So I'm going to go hang out with her. And, you know, I'm just going to pause this and be right back. So there's a chance that she will stay asleep and I'll be able to finish this because I just got her to go back to sleep or I'll get interrupted again. So, um, but I was talking about refining our plans and intentions in accordance with, or specifically um, in regard to our new moon or Virgo season intentions. Um, yeah, but overall, this is a time where we might be just in a space of refining some elements of our lives um, and how we wish to see ourselves in the future. Um, so the Oracle message uh, actually that goes perfectly with this is the crone. So the crone is the energy, um, the Oracle for this week. And this really speaks to me in that, um, just with the speaking of wisdom, sorry, I just need to like, sit up for a second. Okay. Um, this is very important. Um, I feel that this speaks to the energy of the elders, the ancestors. When we think about that crone energy, mother or maiden mother crone, the crone is that third phase that basically that release, right? That, that waning energy, that, um, energy that is getting ready um, for that transition into a new cycle. And so with the crone here, again, this is opening ourselves up to receiving that divine, deep, dark wisdom that is within all of us and within all things within our existence. And the raven is such a very wise, wise animal, wise bird. Um, yeah, this just this is such a powerful energy. And I'm just seeing these little, I've never noticed that before, these little shadow things going on in the background. So yeah, there's just speaking a lot to, to shadows in uh the medallion that it's holding. So that almost looks like a talisman, right? Six-pointed star as above, so below. Divine feminine, divine masculine, just that balance energy, everything coming into one. It even encompasses the um, symbols for earth, air, fire, water, right? So it coming together to form that union, the divine union of spirit. And so it just, yeah, there's just so much goodness there. Um, so yeah, we're beginning this week with that disseminating moon. Um, and when we think about the sun, right? Because we are also, we're still in Virgo season. So there is a theme or focus on this, process of discernment or utilizing discernment as we release and really purge and go through the detox of this greater release again, moving into next year with those really big transitions. Um, we want to really just like come into that, that shift um, as a light being and light meaning just like not carrying a bunch of baggage as we like move into that next phase, right? And so that refinement just feels like Venus and Venus in Virgo. And Venus is actually um, said to be in fall, right? In depressed, in a depressed state in Virgo, because it is an, uh, the opposite sign of his exaltation, which is in Pisces. And this is interesting to me. This is the hardest, um, one of the dignities that I've had to sit with because I love Venus and Virgo. It is very grounded. It's very practical. It's connected to nature. It's connected to just like I think about, again, the priestess. I think about the herbalist and working with all the different elements to utilize that for healing, for bringing balance. So while um, Venus is in Virgo, that focus is on the good vibrations, the beauty around us and just bringing things into harmony, bringing things into balance. And then with the sun, the sun still in <clears throat> Virgo, the sun is that element of divine intelligence. It's that inner wisdom and, and that inner light. And they're both happening or they're both transiting in Virgo, which again, there is a focus or an intention of looking at internally 
our weak points, our weaknesses, what is toxic, what's out of balance, what, you know, Virgo has a stereotype of like wanting to fix everything or pointing out being like the critique and pointing out all the things that are wrong, right? And so that is happening internally here during Virgo season so that we can really begin to shed. And with Venus's help, we'll begin to like really have the ability to um, refine, like have, be in a process of refinement and being able to find balance and peace and harmony so that we can heal and again, move into the next transition um, with light. So she's up and I'm gonna have to pause this and I'll be right back. So back again um, and let's see. Um, so I just talked about the sun and Venus, both in Virgo. And so on the 16th, which is this Friday, come here, come in here and hang out. Let me just close this door though. Come here. Okay. Say hello. All right. So on the 16th. Um, we have Venus squaring Mars, and then we have the sun in opposition to Neptune. And so essentially, um, the energy that we're really um, dealing with essentially is, okay, that Virgo energy, right, with the sun and Venus. And then in addition to that, um, oh, the sun and Venus are basically both being ruled by um by Mercury and Mercury's retrograde at this point, right? And so with this this Mercury retrograde energy, again, Mercury is in Libra, retrograde in Libra. And so again, there's that focus on balance and harmony. And what we might be experiencing in this first half of Mercury retrograde is we're going to see the extremes. Um, we're going to, especially with the Virgo energy, we're going to be seeing what is out of balance first. And with that awareness, we are then going to um, be able to utilize discernment to bring begin to bring these energies back into balance. Um, so that is essentially what we're working with. Um, yes, sweetie, I have to do this. I have to do this. Okay. And then we can hang out or get whatever you want. Hold on a second. You want mango? Fourth time's a charm here, all right? <laughs> so we have Venus squaring Mars on September 16th, and we have the sun in, <clears throat> in opposition to Neptune. Um, both the sun and Venus are ruled by Mercury. Mars is ruled by Mercury, and then we have Jupiter, Neptune ruled by Jupiter, right? Um, because it's in Pisces. And so um, what we have going on here is that with Venus and Mars, let's talk about that first. Venus describes what we want, our desire, our desires, and then Mars describes how we act on those desires, right? The actions that we make, um, the decisions that we make to move towards what we want. And Mars is being ruled, I don't know if I said that already, but Mars is being ruled by Mercury retrograde in Libra. So again, there's just kind of like probably this dance of this or that or going back and going forth. And um, there is this internal and external intel that we're tapping into that will hopefully help us to overcome our challenges in regard to our desires and our and how we act upon them. And so this is just with a square, it is a, a confrontation, a challenge, but I feel like both coming together essentially and tapping into their own aspects of Intel. And really it's all being channeled in through Mercury retrograde and Libra. And we're going to get some understanding and some support of how to move past this challenge or this threshold. So then, um, I want to point out Mercury, Mercury is retrograde, right? And so interestingly enough, it, it's retrograde in Libra. And so there is Venus ruling Mercury retrograde because it's in, uh, Venus is in, or it's in Libra, which is Venus's, you know, Venus rules that sign. 
And so there's slow movement there. And Venus essentially is invisible at this point. Um, she's getting really, really close to the sun. And where she is in her, in her, the story or her myth or her journey is that she is basically descending into the deeper layers of the underworld. But like, she's, I mean, that point in when she comes with the sun or meets with the sun is when she is basically goes to that whole death life or death and rebirth process. And she is gifted and with her, her powers or her, some new abilities. And she is transformed, uh, into the evening star as time moved forward, right? And so then with Mars, Mars is slowing down too to retrace its steps as it will soon go retrograde. And so it's really interesting, like, again, both of them are in this periods of where they're really having to um, process a lot and essentially shed. And so then we have the sun and uh, an opposition to Neptune. So the sun in, in Virgo, Neptune in Pisces, and there's this opposing energy of practicality and idealism. And the question is, how do we integrate both? Um, how, again, do we find that, that balance point, that center? And so Neptune will dissolve the boundaries that Neptune's really, really good at that. It's just like, oh, you thought this was real? Well, what about this thing? And it completely blows your mind, right? It it have it has you question the nature of your reality. And the sun, hopefully the sun, it, by finding that, that point of balance, that harmony between the two, the sun or that divine intelligence will resonate with some aspect there being presented by Neptune and Pisces. And it will inspire us and give us that like that warmth to create or just light that fire within to to eventually create. And during this time, we have the moon and Gemini. And so this is just assisting with the process here um, with that moon. It, it is holding that intention while also in this phase of shedding. Right. Because on the 17th of September, the moon will enter its last quarter phase in Gemini. So again, there is like that push to move past some level of resistance to again, make a big release um, of letting go. And with that Gemini energy, it's definitely going to be letting go of some ideas, letting go of some thoughts or some beliefs. And moving towards, uh, moving into Sunday, we have Mercury retrograde in opposition to Ju Jupiter retrograde, which is basically can come forth as the one truth versus multiple truths. And with the moon being in, the move will, moon will enter Cancer at this time. This can be a time that's really sensitive in regard to what we feel for ourselves, what we believe for to ourselves. And it could be an internal battle of like going back and forth was like, no, but it's this one thing. This is my like believing, this is my faith. This is my foundation. And you're telling me that this is all bullshit or this isn't working. And then, or it could be a, an argument that you actually have with another person where you're just not seeing eye to eye. And there's like, you know, is there one right way or are there multiple ways to come and approach this challenge or to move forward? So that's the energy that we're coming up on this week. Um, I do wanna share that um, Pluto, I checked the dates while I had the time to like be with my daughter when she woke up and nurse. Pluto will enter Aquarius March 24th. Mars will enter um, cancer on, I think like two days before that. And at that time, Saturn will already be in Pisces. It just entered Pisces, I think a couple of weeks before. So that's going to be again, that late spring, right? I feel late spring is going to be really, really powerful and just going to be like, I have no idea. I can't even predict right now. I just know there's going to, there, I've been pointing to the end of March more so because of Mars and Gemini. Um, 
Mars will move finally move out of Gemini. But then also for me personally, with my own zodiacal releasing, I was just like, for me personally, I was like, oh, the end of March, that's going to be like a transitional period. That's going to, that's when I feel like I'm going to be like ready to move forward in this plan of action. And so I think that is going to be a collective vibe, but we'll, we'll um, check back, you know, along, we'll check along the way and hopefully you all will share your thoughts um, and comments in the comment section below. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share if you enjoy this content. And I'll be talking with you again here soon. Take care.